Welcome back to the shop, my friends. Steve here at SKS Props, and in today's build video, we're gonna take a deep dive into how to make EVA foam horns. Throughout my prop making career, I have made a bunch of them, and I have a project coming up that's gonna require even more. Now, there's lots of different techniques out there to put horns together, but some of them are not necessarily beginner friendly. But in this video, I'm gonna show you a multitude of different ways to put horns together, so even if you're brand new to foam smithing or cosplay in general, you can easily make these. Now, all the horns that are out here and in the video are of course made out of my HD foam and foam clay, both of which can be found over at Blick Art Materials, and I have free PDF files available that you can download in case you would like to make your own. So, I wanna show you what it takes to put some EVA foam horns together. Let's go ahead and get started. So the first technique we're gonna go over is the layering method. And this is probably gonna be the easiest and I think my favorite out of the group. The reason I like it so much is that you can make really big horns or really small horns just depending on the EVA layer thickness that you're wanting to use. The other thing I like about these versus the horns that are hollow is because they are a solid, they're a lot more stable and a lot more durable. And you can still get some really cool compound curves out of it by curving a layer and then gluing on the next layer while it's curved. But because it's EVA foam, it's still extremely lightweight. I'm gonna start off by making a couple of large layered horns by using the horn pattern part A. Part A1 is traced and cut out of some 10 millimeter foam. This is gonna make up the main spine of this horn. Part A2 is also gonna be traced and cut out of some 10 millimeter foam. To make sure that it's mirrored on both sides, I apply some small dots of super glue. That way I can cut out two pieces of 10 millimeter foam at the same time. This process is then repeated for the second horn. For the A3 pattern, I'm switching over to a six millimeter foam. This is gonna give that horn a tapered look. Here you can see how the horn is starting to come into shape. A4 is also going to be traced and cut out of 6mm foam. Part A5 is going to be traced and cut out of some 4mm foam. With all my layers cut out, I can now start to manipulate the central spine. This is how I'm gonna give the horn a unique compound curve. With A1 bent to the shape that I want, I can now glue A2 onto the side. Before I get too far, I wanna make sure that the second horn curve matches the first. So here you can see I take my other A1 piece and bend it the opposite direction to match the first. With the general shape of the horn that I want, I can now start gluing the other layers onto the sides. Notice that I'm using super glue instead of contact cement. And that's because in the end when I'm heat sealing it, high heat can affect the bond of contact cement. It will not affect the super glue. With the final layers glued on, you can see how these flat pieces of foam took on a really cool shape. Now I can take the horns over to my sanding station, and using my rotary tool, I'm going to sand down the transitions between each layer on the horn. After the layers have been sanded down, I can then use the very edge of the sanding drum to start giving these horns some detailed striations. With the sanding complete, I can now use my heat gun to heat seal the foam on both horns. And you can see with my HD foam, it makes it extremely smooth and very organic.
Another reason why I really like the layering method is you can completely change the style of the horn itself. So if you didn't want all these details and all the line grooves that are in here, you could sand each layer completely smooth and have a horn like this. This process will be very similar to how I made the large horns, taking parts B1 through B3 and cutting those out of some 6mm foam. B4 on the very end will be cut out of 4mm foam and then all these pieces can be glued together. A rotary tool is once again used to sand the foam, but this time making sure that all layers are sanded completely smooth. You could also take this layering technique and add some foam clay to it to give your horn a unique look. For this example, we're going to take parts C1, 2, and 3. These are going to be cut out of 6mm foam and 4mm foam. My rotary tool is once again used to blend the layers and give it some detail. And here you can say the horn is finished, but I'm going to add some layer lines using foam clay. Water is applied to the foam to help the foam clay stick to the surface. Then I could use my fingers and silicone tip sculpting tools to add some detail. This process was then repeated layer by layer up to the very end of the horn. With sculpting complete, this will be left to dry for at least 24 hours. Another way that you can make horns is by utilizing foam clay, and there's a couple different ways you could do that. You can make a solid horn, and then once these dry, they are extremely light, so they work really well as prosthetics. You could also make an EVA foam horn, and then use the foam clay to texture it, or you could use a tin foil base, and then skin that with the foam clay. This works really well because after it dries, you can go with your rotary tool to add all the details and texture lines. That's exactly what I did for my HD armor for New York Comic Con. I knew that Scott was going to be wearing this in a very busy area, and I wanted all the horns that were on this armor to be extremely durable. To make sure that the tinfoil is compact, I'll use wooden mallets and dowels to press the tinfoil in on itself. Once the general shape had been complete, I could then skin the surface with a layer of foam clay. My recommendation would be always add more than you need because once it's dry, you could sand it down. After 24 hours, I could then take my rotary tool and start to refine the clay. This is also a great time to use a wire brush to add additional textures. A final pass with the sanding sponge and this horn can be considered complete. Another way to make horns is the hollow horn technique, and probably the one you're most familiar with and one I see online quite a bit, but I will say this is probably the least beginner friendly way of going about it. Basically you have a bunch of small sheets and once they're all glued together, they create the compound curve to make the horn. The seams though can be tricky, especially for beginners. So if you have a project like this, you could easily swap these out for the layered technique in its place. Now on the template, I do have both of these available and you can go to their respective build videos to see exactly how they're put together. You can see here with hollow horns, your seams have to be perfect. Unless you're going for a more dramatic texture. Here I wrap strips of 2mm foam around the hollow horn.
So as you can see, there's lots of different techniques that you could utilize to make your own EVA foam horns. And again, I have free PDF files available that you can download to build right along with the video and practice. And if you are building any of my builds or utilizing HD foam, be sure to tag me at SKS Props on Twitter and Instagram because I want to see your creations. Until next time, build your best with the best. HD foam.